The Norco Fluid VLT isn't just the first lightweight e-bike to come from the Canadian brand, it's also one of the first on the market to be available with the new Bosch SX motor. Of course, Norco is a popular brand within the e-bike scene, having developed a reputation for producing tough bikes that lean towards the more aggressive side. So how would that translate to an e-bike that's been optimized for weight? And how would it compare to the likes of the Trek Fuli XE, the Giant Trans XE Plus Elite, and the Specialized Levo SL? We've been testing the Norco Fluid VLT over the past few weeks to find out. The Norco Fluid VLT is a brand new lightweight e-bike. It's essentially an electrified version of the regular fluid, albeit with several notable differences. For a start, it's purpose-built around a mullet setup with a 27.5-inch rear wheel that allows for much shorter chainstays compared to what we've seen from Norco e-bikes in the past. Most models are equipped with 150mm travel fork and 140mm of rear travel. The exception is the top-end model, which features 10mm less travel at either end and lighter-duty suspension in order to reduce weight as much as possible. Our back is a familiar four-bar suspension design, though the chunky rocker link drives the rear shock via a trunnion bearing mount to maximize sensitivity. It also features less anti-squat compared to the regular fluid, with more of an emphasis on climbing grip and comfort. Powering the Fluid VLT is the new Bosch SX motor. It's both smaller in profile and almost a kilo lighter than the Bosch CX motor, though it does produce less peak torque at 55 newton meters. However, if you pedal fast enough, it'll achieve the same 600 watts of peak power output, making this a punchy motor for a lightweight e-bike. Bolted inside the down tube is a 400 watt hour battery, and there's an optional 250 watt hour range extender for those who are looking to tackle much longer rides. You'll find the system controller integrated into the frame's top tube and a wireless mini remote for changing the motor's assist levels. Norco also makes use of the wireless speed sensor that's built into the motor, which is triggered by a magnet that attaches to the valve on the rear wheel. Along with the weather-tight charge port and the metal skid plate underneath the motor, the Fluid VLT offers a robust and high-quality fit and finish. Norco offers the Fluid VLT in five frame sizes, with S1 being the smallest and S5 being the largest. According to the recommendations, a rider of my height of 174 centimeters should be on the S3. It is quite a long bike though, so I ended up requesting the S2 size, which features a reach of 447.5 millimeters. All frame sizes get the same 64.5 degree head angle, though the seat tube angle varies from 76.5 to 77.5 degrees. The rear center length is also size specific, ranging from 432 to 444 millimeters. On the note of geometry, there are no flip chips to be found on the Fluid VLT, and for those who are wondering, it isn't possible to fit a 29-inch rear wheel. There are four models in the Norco Fluid VLT lineup for 2024, and prices will start at 9,000 Australian dollars. Our test bike sits one step up from the bottom. This is the Norco Fluid VLT C2 140, and the current retail price on this is 11 and a half grand. Now, whereas the top two models get a full carbon frame, this bike features a carbon front triangle paired to an alloy rear. In terms of suspension, we've got a RockShox Lyric Select Plus fork and a Fox Floatex 2 Performance Elite shock. We've got a SRAM GX Axis transmission, TRP Trail Evo brakes, a TransX adjustable travel dropper post, and Continental Trail tires with a 2.4 inch crypt total on the front and a 2.4 inch Zynotal on the rear. Now, confirmed weight for our Norco Fluid VLT test bike is 19.68 kilos, and as usual, that's without pedals and with the tires set up tubeless. Now, it's not the lightest e bike that we've tested, but for those who are concerned by weight, it's worth noting that the top end C1 130 model is claimed to weigh just 18.1 kilos. Now before getting to ride impressions, it's worth touching on bike setup and Norco's excellent ride align software. This calculator allows you to input your height and weight and outspits recommendations for cockpit setup, tire pressures and suspension settings. Using that as a starting point, I did find the suspension was a little bit firmer and slower than what I was looking for. If you end up in a similar position, I'd recommend adjusting the sliders to bias the setup towards a plusher and more active feel. After reducing pressure slightly and speeding up the rebound damping, the suspension was spot on. And kudos to Norco for investing the time and effort into producing such a detailed setup assistant to help its customers get the most out of their bikes. Out on the trail, and despite not being the lightest e-bike out there, I've been really impressed with the agile character of the Norco Fluid VLT. 
The weight is really well placed on this bike with less mass up at the head tube thanks to that shorter 400 watt hour battery. Combined with the mullet setup and the short chain stays, it initiates turns and rips corners with absolute ease. There's also great support from the suspension making it feel lively and playful. It isn't the plushest bike we've tested, though it does have 10 mil less travel compared to the Focus Jam Squared SL and the Specialized Levo SL. And some of the feedback is likely due to the RockShox Lyric with its Charger 3 damper. Now in some parts of the world, Norco offers this exact same bike with a Fox 36 rhythm fork, which is personally what I'd be going for. Otherwise, the rear suspension is smooth and really stable. The Float X2 is a tremendous performer, keeping the whole bike steady through choppy terrain. Along with its consistency on longer and rougher descents, it's this dynamic stability that stands as the key advantage over a smaller inline shock. There's masses of control at speed, with the suspension soaking up harsh, ill-timed landings calmly and comfortably. Combined with a sturdy chassis and the burly build kit, you can push this bike quite hard and fast on rowdy enduro type trails. Now this was our first proper long term test of the Bosch SX motor, and while we will have a separate video coming in the near future, there's already a lot to talk about. I've spent most of my time on the trail using the adaptive EMTB mode, which alters the motor's power output depending on how hard you're pushing the pedals. The progressive power delivery isn't just torque sensitive on the Bosch SX motor though, it's also cadence sensitive. Now, at cruising speeds, it's pretty mellow, and that helps to conserve the battery. Pedal quickly and forcefully, however, and you'll feel the motor roar to life. You'll need to push at a high cadence of over 100 RPM in order to unlock the full 600 watts of power, which ends up being fantastic encouragement when you're whipping through undulating single track. In addition to being more powerful than the TQ, Specialized SL, and Fazua Ride 60 motors, the Bosch SX drive unit is also significantly more responsive with faster pickup at the pedals. Indeed, at full tilt, it feels very much the same as the full-powered Bosch CX motor. It also has the same extended boost function in the EMTB and turbo modes, which sees the motor continue to provide power momentarily when you've stopped pedaling. This is a brilliant aid for clearing technical features on a steep climb, providing a notable advantage compared to other mid-power motors. Combined with the addictive acceleration and the progressive power delivery, the Bosch SX drive unit constantly prods at you to go faster. It's a great match for the sporty fluid VLT, with that lure of maximum power, meaning that I regularly finish rides absolutely knackered in the best way possible. Now while we have been really impressed with the Bosch SX motor, it isn't exactly flawless. The main issue is the annoying clacking noise that it makes when you're coasting along rocky trails. This is due to the internal freewheel that disengages the motor from the drivetrain, which helps to reduce drag when you're above the cutoff point. Now we used to experience the same issue with the full powered CX motor, though later versions seem to have dulled down that noise by quite a bit, which made it much more noticeable here. It's also worth noting that while the bigger CX motor provides a heap of grunt in almost any gear, the SX drive unit really requires you to turn the pedals over at a decent cadence. If you get stuck in a high gear on a climb, it can struggle to churn out enough torque. Much like a regular mountain bike, you'll benefit from reading the terrain and downshifting in anticipation of steep pinches. On the topic of climbing, I didn't find the Fluid VLT to be the most planted due to its short chain stays and smaller rear wheel. I found it suits a more active and dynamic riding style as you need to accentuate your weight over the handlebars to keep the front wheels sticking. The flip side is that the Fluid VLT is really nimble around tight uphill switchbacks. The riding position is also comfortable thanks to the steep seat angle, and the relatively tall BB and low profile motor provides heaps of ground clearance. Really the main limitation on the climbs is the rear tyre, with its shallow tread and its hard rubber compound inhibiting traction on loose surfaces. This is exacerbated by the perky motor, which can quickly overwhelm the available grip and spin out the rear wheel if you're not careful. With that in mind, upgrading to stickier and more aggressive tyres would be a really good idea if you're frequenting chunkier terrain. This would also improve the Fluid VLT's descending capabilities, which feels like it has a bit of room to grow. While the impeccable handling and the burly chassis gives it a thoroughly confidence-inspiring ride quality, I can't help but wonder how it would perform with an extra 10mm of travel at each end. It already comes with the big Lyric and the Float X2 after all, so there'd likely be a negligible weight increase to extend the travel. Now I suspect that Norco has restricted the Fluid VLT to help differentiate it from the Sight VLT, which I guess makes sense from a commercial perspective. But given the potential improvement in traction, comfort and high speed stability, I certainly wouldn't object to the Fluid VLT having a touch more squish. 
Now to find out how much range I could squeeze out of that 400 watt hour battery, I subjected the Fluid VLT to our standardized range test. This involves pedaling up a road climb in the most powerful assist mode before bombing back down a single track descent to see how many laps I could rack up before the battery ran flat. I ended up with over 1300 meters of elevation gain, which is really impressive given how much support the SX motor provides on the way up. If you're keen to see how that stacks up against the competition, I put the results in the full review, which is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. There's also more information in there about sizing and suspension setup, as well as a detailed comparison with the specialized Levo SL, which is no doubt one of the benchmarks in the lightweight e-bike category. If you're keen to know more, just click the link in the video description below. And that brings us to the verdict on the Norco Fluid VLT. While the Canadian brand may be late to the lightweight e-bike party, its patience has surely paid off. Indeed, choosing to build it around the Bosch SX motor was a smart move. The compact motor delivers masses of power and a highly responsive feel that sees it performing remarkably close to a conventional full-powered e-bike, albeit at a significant weight advantage. Combined with its mullet setup, the excellent geometry and supportive suspension, the Fluid VLT is a wickedly fun bike to ride on fast and flowy trails. Its sturdy build means it can handle some pretty rowdy riding, though it could benefit from a touch more travel to help it master rougher terrain. We'd also recommend fitting some stickier and more aggressive tyres to make the most of its cornering abilities and high speed poise. That aside, the Fluid VLT delivers a lively and playful ride quality that underscores the handling advantages that a lightweight e-bike offers over over a full powered equivalent. So if you've been tempted by the genre but have been put off by low powered motors, you'll no doubt want to take a very close look at the Fluid VLT. As mentioned before, the full review of this bike is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. Just click the link in the video description below if you're keen to check it out. If you've got any questions for us about this bike, drop those into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video review and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!